I want to introduce now how we use our visual memory. That's how we keep pictures in our heads. Everybody can keep pictures in their heads. And it's a question of what we use them for, which we'll come on to in a minute. We can use them for words, numbers, comprehension, revision, short-term memory. All of these things are picture memories. Um, and as we're dealing with people who have really good visual skills, our visual learners, then teaching them through pictures, through the pictures they generate, is really simple. It is reckoned that 65% of people are visual learners. Um, we know at the age of six weeks old, a child has a really good visual memory. How do we know that? One of the first tests you do on a child when they, um, their developmental tests at six weeks old is do they recognize their mother? And if they smile at their mother, you know that they, they're developing in that particular skill. And if mum puts on a pink curly wig, assuming she hasn't got pink curly hair, then they're gonna cry because the picture, they're, the person they're looking at doesn't match the picture they've got in their head and they get really stressed about it. So we know everybody can visualize at six weeks old. As children grow up, they've, got this, they've come with this amazing ability to remember pictures. And the brain processes visual information 60,000 times faster than text. And 90% of the information that actually comes into your brain is visual. So this is an extremely easy way to teach visual learners. So let's talk about some of the ways that people picture things. If I say to you, can you picture an elephant? Then just have a look at your elephant for a moment. And is that a still elephant or is it a moving elephant? Is it dancing a jig or is it just sitting down asleep? The interesting thing is that you can, that people who are highly visual can have lots of different images simultaneously in their head, as shown by the little cartoon character there. And when it becomes too much, they get very confused. There's some people who have exceptional visual skills. Take a look at that duck, that picture on the right. What do you see it as being? Do you see it as a duck or do you see it as being a rabbit? Or are you clicking between the two? The faster you can see between the two, it probably explains the more visual you are. So if you can see the both simultaneously, you're a very, you've got very fast visual skills. If you're clicking between the two, like my hand is, then you will be jumping from a duck to a um, rabbit. On the left there is a picture of an ordnance survey map. So it's one of those maps of the country where they've got lots of lines to show you how, t how high the um, hills are, mountains are, etc. When some people who are exceptional visualizers won't look at that in a 2D, two-dimensional plane, they'll look at it as being, they can see the mountains. It's an extraordinary visual skill. That's one of the best visual skills I've ever met, and I've only met it in a few people. But quite often people are dyslexic at the same time. The next question is about two dimensions and three dimensions. Right. Two dimensions is everything's flat. Okay. Three dimensions is the world. When you look around you, everything is in three dimensions. It goes up that way and it's got depth. A chair, a person, everybody like that has got three dimensions. Now, when you're a baby, the whole world is three dimensions. It doesn't, it's, that's, the, that's your life. And so when you think of a pear, for example, can you think of cutting it down the middle and what it looks like on the inside? So you can think of the cross section of a pear. When you think of a, um, a house that you might see, can you think of the cross section of the house? So you can see all the rooms on the inside and the walls, and where the walls go. That's a valuable skill if you're going to be an architect. Another great visual skill. How do they use this when they are struggling with literacy? What actually happens? The words on a piece of paper are in two dimensions. And we don't tell people, we don't train them to keep letters still on the page because their world has been three dimensions and nobody tells them to do anything different. 
We need to, um, in schools, we're teaching our children phonics. And what we need to do is to teach them word recognition as well. Because to start with, when you see the word children, you'll break it down into phonics. And then once you've seen it a couple of times, you want to read the whole word, children. Not in the little bits anymore. And people who are highly visual find even the longest words really, really easy if they're visualising them. And people can do this with mental arithmetic too. So if they want to add two and three, they might imagine two apples plus three apples and then count them and they've got five apples. When it comes to multiplication or addition of 2x and 3y, they've got no information to hang that on. They're very visual people who want to immediately think of apples or pears or something, but the minute you say 3x and 2y, they don't understand what that is. And they can work out how to do more complicated calculations in their head. That's how you become really good at mental arithmetic. <laughs>